for the Board of Selectmen meeting, Friday, April 12th. Late Camp's taping. Nobody else appears to be taping in this vast audience we have in front of us. Uh, so item number one is to meet with Bernie Lynch from Community Paradigm Associates, LLC. So we can start talking about the approach to the interviews that we're going to have in about a half an hour. Right, and um, I don't know if we'll need half an hour to do this, but uh, we have uh, three candidates coming in to meet with you today. Uh, starting with Lisa Green, uh, the um, current assistant town administrator in the town of Whitman. Uh, she's been there for about uh, a little over two years in that position. Uh, she'd served on the Board of Selectmen. Uh, she's a lawyer by profession uh, and um, has uh, previously served in the federal government working for the Social Security Administration as well as some, uh, some experience with um, a small law firm. Uh, she comes uh, highly recommended from her references, uh, and um, you know, I certainly think that she'll give you um, a perspective of what she could bring to the, um, the town of Lakeville. Uh, that's followed by Adam Wilson uh, coming in to meet with you at 1130. Uh, Adam was the former town administrator in Aquina. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Aquina. It's a small, small, small town on Martha's Vineyard, but uh, its size shouldn't um, uh, concern you much because it's a com relatively complex community. Uh, it has some tribal property there of the Wampanoags, uh, some, uh, some high degree of federal involvement there that has to be uh, navigated. Uh, as a small town administrator, he's worn multiple hats uh, within that town uh, in terms of the uh, general operation. He um, comes with a, um, his, his, his um, major project that he worked on there, and he worked, he worked on a number of uh, interesting projects, uh, a solar array, I believe, which was the third in the state. I don't want to steal his thunder, uh, but the third municipal, um, I think it was third, uh, um, solar installation in the state. Uh, but his uh, major project was the move of a lighthouse uh, that was owned by the federal government that needed to be pulled back from the um, cliffs uh, and um, quite a complex project. One, it, it's not easy to buy property from the federal government. Uh, he was able to navigate that as well as um, work with uh, citizens on the raising of necessary money, some grant writing uh, to get the funds to, and then the, um, the engineering and construction work to actually make that project happen. So it was, uh, he has some good project management skills that I think he'll be able to speak to. Uh, prior to that, he served as a um, uh, zoning and planning uh, person for the town of Oak Bluffs. Uh, and prior to that, he ran a small business on the vineyard. So he comes with some business acumen as well as his public sector experience. Uh, he has a master's degree in public administration from um, somewhere in Florida. Uh, he worked for a while um, when he got out of... Um, uh, with his graduate degree, he worked for a period of time for Senator Towers of uh, Texas uh, on Capitol Hill uh, before returning uh, or coming uh, to the vineyard, uh, which was supposed to be a short, uh, I think a short summer uh, visit uh, to visit with his family, and he ended up deciding to relocate there for a period of time and start that business. And then lastly, um, uh, early this afternoon, we're going to meet with Maureen Candido. Uh, Maureen has, is coming pretty much strictly out of the private sector, uh, where she um, is um, uh, hold a position with um, Martinetti, I believe, yeah. um, and um, has risen up the ranks there to uh, uh, a, a position of uh, responsibility, good responsibility. Uh, prior to that, she uh, was with um, the Stop and Shop, uh, A-hold uh, company, Stop and Shop, the giant, below, I'm not familiar with below, but uh, some good, uh, again, good management experience there. Um, so I think her, her management skills, her administrative skills, certainly, or her financial skills, certainly, um, uh, there. Uh, what I found particularly interesting about uh, Maureen is, as many of you know her, uh, probably, in her role here as a uh, member of the Finance Committee uh, in Lakeville. Uh, so she's become more and more familiar with uh, municipal uh, government. Uh, she's uh, working on her master's degree in public administration from Bridgewater State. Uh, seems very um, uh, enthusiastic about um, a career 
move to the public sector, uh, to municipal government, uh, and um, is very much uh, supportive of the notion of citizen community engagement uh, in my conversations with her. And I was uh, frankly very impressed with um, her knowledge, her enthusiasm, uh, and um, her, uh, her interest in, um, uh, in those areas. So those are your candidates. You did have one other candidate uh, that I had planned to bring in to you. Um, as I think I explained when I first met with the board a while back, and I think I reiterated, it's a very competitive market right now. Uh, and people are being, you, you've seen this, people are being sort of scooped up. One of your finalists that I had uh, starting off um, um, moved to, uh, took another position. Um, and uh, then uh, Jay McGrail just received the uh, position over in Marion as their town administrator. Uh, you had one other uh, candidate that we had that uh, I had hoped to bring in, but uh, he subsequently withdrew from a number of positions for some personal reasons. Um, so, uh, but you have those three, and I think all three uh, can do the job. Uh, certainly one has experience doing the job. The other one is in the assistant position and is ready to make that, make that next move. And the third is that sort of out-of-the-box candidate that we talked about right at the outset of the process. So those are your candidates. Uh, and then I've provided you with a series of questions, and I'm not sure if you want to go through those questions and talk about modifications and how you want to go about asking the questions. And yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to ask the board if you guys, you know, had any thing with regard to these questions or anything on here that you really want to get out of these candidates today because there are a number of different questions that really are, uh, they're not generic, but they're mm -hmm. generic such that they can lead to kind of the, the specific questions that we're really trying to get. So I know, Leah, you weren't really involved when we started this process in terms, although you were there, yeah. um, you know, and, and I think you actually did have some input with regard to what the skill set happens to be that we're really looking for, you know, in this person, because I think we have, now that we have the candidates and we know a little bit about the candidates, we have three, you know, kind of different, uh, I'm sure there are different personalities as well, but different skill sets that are coming to the table. And I know from my perspective that I wanted to make sure that we had someone that was really a team player. Um, you know, my, my biggest concern with the sustainability of Town Hall, and I know I've talked with you guys about it too, is really being able to kind of work with a number of different departments and kind of bring people together and really kind of be that glue you know, around the other departments. And I kind of wanted to know, I think also too, it's, you know, in terms of, I want to make sure that we have a question related to, you know, an experience that somebody had with making a difficult personnel decision. I think that's key um, in my mind as to one of my biggest concerns um, of making sure that we have somebody that's able to, you know, be really the, the leader, but also have, you know, the ability to make those difficult decisions and really to kind of get to somebody who can make difficult decisions and talk about those decisions and what they've made in the past, whether they be personnel or whether they be, you know, something else that involves, um, you know, a public issue, you know, and how they kind of handle the pressure related to it. Because I think in terms of some of the items in here too, I mean, Rita did a lot and always has done a lot with regard to the budget. And that's been a huge area that, you know, we've had in there. So I want to make sure that that's something that's addressed too. But, you know, just from that perspective, I guess, if you guys can weigh in on what you want to see, what your ideal candidate kind of looks like before we get a chance to talk to people, <coughs> if there's any questions you want to tailor towards that. Hmm. Well, I certainly like uh, certain questions. You know, I like number seven about... Uh, your approach to motivating and evaluating employees, and certainly the financial part, which was eight. Uh, and I guess number number three. So those would be ones, and, and certainly the, the problem solving, the decision making of, of difficult ones that you alluded to. Some of the other ones, you know, I don't. When I say I don't care, I don't <laughs> think that they're that important to, to the decision. So uh, three, seven, and eight, kind of okay. And two, you know, and I, I think the other ones, as the as the people speak, uh, they'll, they'll tell us a lot of what we want to hear, anyways. Perhaps. Yeah. I have a quick question before they perhaps come. 
not that they can't watch it on tape, is both Lisa and Adam were your finalists in Marion. Marion Town Administrator that they just hired, is that from your portfolio? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa was, in, uh, was a, a finalist in Marion. She, yes. And she yes. Through, uh, Adam was a finalist and... Uh, it, yes. Right. They both were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know if they hired from within. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. they, they hired someone else that you had given. Yeah, yeah they, they hired, hired the, uh, the other candidate that's in here, uh, in your finals. Yes, okay. I didn't read that he was the finalist there, but obviously he got the, not only was he a finalist, he got the job. Right. But I didn't see that in the presentation when I, yeah. when I Googled various things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had, again, sort of a similar situation to you. We had a number of, we had uh, three finalists and a, an alternate, uh, and um, on a... Um, uh, two people withdrew, uh, one to take another job, one to stay with their current position, and then um, uh, then uh, Lisa withdrew at the, uh, right before the, the day. Okay. And so the person they hired was the one that just withdrew from ours? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I only no, wanted to get that out of the absolutely. way. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm glad that yeah, you brought first. that up because I wanted to ask the, yeah. the same thing <clears> in regard <throat> to, you know, the candidates that we're seeing actually were all the same candidates with the exception of Morgan Candido who applied for the Marion <clears throat> position. Right. There were a couple others over there that, that, that were not were here. Not here. That okay. pulled uh, out from there. Um, so you like the personal search firm? Yeah, I'm your personal. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, well, I, well, no, I said it right the first time. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so I, think I always stress. I do always stress that that I work for the town, not for the people. So. Yeah, so I think with regard to you know your questions, I'm happy to take you know, and if you have any other ones that you want in there, that we kind of take those first one, two, three. Yeah. So we take three. You know, yeah. two, um, three, you know, three, seven, eight as one, two, three. And yeah, then, uh, I mean, I, I agree, you know, with everything that you both said. I mean, to me, managing priorities and projects, looking at their resumes, it kind of speaks for itself that they're, you know, pretty. Uh, right. Um, but it doesn't mean we don't ask a question there. But, you know, um, to go one step further, problem solving, conflict let resolution, which is, I think, something that you were um, touched yeah. on. Not the, just, you know, problem, but more. And the only other thing, too, that we had discussed when we were looking at trying to figure out the ideal type of person and craft that, you know, profile for this position was talking about a little bit with longevity. Because we talked about, do we want someone that this is a stepping stone? And I don't know that we ever kind of came to that conclusion. Right. And I don't know that that necessarily matters, per se, because you know, whether this yeah. ends up being somewhere that someone's yeah. going to come and then give us three years and then move on, you know, I don't know if you guys have any particular thoughts on that. My, my thoughts are you hire the best candidate. I mean, if someone was here from California and they were here visiting a friend, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they have to fly in I from LA every year. I hire the best person. Yeah. They might okay. think it's temporary. Yeah, right. And, and they stay for 20 in. years. Right, exactly. And the people that okay. live down the street, Right. They're the first ones out the door. Right. Yeah. So I, I I'm agree. very un, I, okay. it's yep. unpredictable. If they're happy with the job, then they stay. Yep. If they're yeah. not, they just and I mean anything up changes Bernie, Bernie again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything changes in anyone's life that could prompt them, they could think they want to be here forever and right. something changes and yeah. you right. know, so I agree that and, uh, we go for the best. Yeah, I, I go for I try yeah. to go the best candidate. I mean some of it you can weigh on. So uh, one of the things I did want to get out of people too is what their vision for the town looks like and what mm -hmm. their goal would be for this town, you know, within, you know, you want to do the whole, you know, five-year standard, you know, what's your goal, blah, blah, blah. But I really think it's in regard to their vision for this town. What do they see, you know, and that's mm -hmm. kind of part of one, but not really. It's kind of the introduction, mm -hmm. you know, in, mm -hmm. about Lakeville, but really what do you see you know, is our problems in this town mm -hmm. that you would want to potentially solve, or what do you believe the priorities of this town happen to be, given your knowledge of the town of Lakeville? And not necessarily that, 
you know, obviously we have somebody that lives here, so I'm not trying to make that a biased question per se. Right. But I think that it's important that the person understands, yeah. you know, what the flavor of this town is because otherwise they're not going to fit in right. with the leadership and management skills that we find that are relevant along with the personnel management yeah. because it's kind of huge to understand a little bit about it. So I'd like to know what, not, you know, what they've done to prepare themselves. Um, you know, as I see the fire chief here too, I mean, that was one of the questions that we really wanted to make sure we knew about, you know, how much have you kind of researched what the issues happen to be uh -huh. within our town. And when we were kind of creating the profile, we really didn't have any issues in the town that were so pressing other right. than, you know, we're kind of on a good steady place, but we really wanted to handle the personnel management skills. So I think if we're all on the same page, it's yeah. kind of where no. we're. Well, I, I think they have to solve themselves to us. Yeah, I mean, is that sort of what number 11, you know, uh, it says Lakeville has lost some of its civic culture. Uh, mm. I mean, I'm not sure I totally agree. I still I don't even know where... what the hell that is. Yeah. <laughs> I took that one the off, the, I took no that one off the list. <laughs> they yeah. went to Middleborough. So, I didn't Middleborough put that, has a community band. I didn't band. put that there. I know, know where it band. came from, but I didn't put it there. <laughs> I could be in the community <laughs> band. I was going to maybe go to the first rehearsal. No, I thought I wouldn't. Smart ass. I, do you play clarinet? I say that about some of the other ones. I do yeah. play clarinet. <laughs> John, what do you play? We're going to do our own We're community, do our own community band. band. She plays what? flute. I play clarinet. What do you play? What? Drums? I have a saxophone player and a trumpet oh, player. I play hand grenades and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I can't sing and I can't play an instrument. You I, can I wish conduct. I could. <laughs> you can clap. Right. Yeah, right. and clap. So in terms of, you know, the ordering of these questions, um, you know, if you guys are okay where we start with one, we talk about, you know, kind of what's on there, but also add in the, you know, the vision and the goal. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you know um, about Lakeville? Yep. Um, what do you know? That's always the trick question in the, in the private sector. What do you know about my company? Right. You know. Whether they did or they didn't research it. Right. Yeah. So we kind of do that. Even when yeah. you tell your kids. Yeah. You, <laughs> one one thing I suggest on here. A couple things. One is these questions are designed to sort of facilitate a dialogue. So Absolutely. you don't have to stick yep. to the script. Uh, I read them as is verbatim. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, the um, and you can always drill down if they say something that's interesting. Go yep. at it and drill down. On that second, if you do decide to read them verbatim, uh, when it says your strongest management skills, this is somewhat of a new question that we've started putting in there. But the, it gets sometimes they um, they get thrown off by this, and they start talking about their people skills or management. They manage people. What this was designed to do is really focus in on, you know, what do they do? They consider finance, economic development. Gotcha. Project. Mm -hmm. So if you might want to say All instead of management things. skills, your municipal skills as opposed to management skills. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt you. Um, your strengths. Okay. Yeah, so I mean if you guys want to just take, you know, kind of I'm happy to lead off and we can just kind of go down the line. I mean I don't need to you know, and if we kind of start off with can one I, can I hosey, can I hosey? What's hosey? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Come on, that, how that, the hell are you? Is that a word? I'll, I'll do the you, finance one. I'm you and I must be the only ones. I have. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Bernie and I know the same thing. That's a real word. I'll do numbers. Yes. I'll, I'll do the, fi Look, I'll do the finance one. Thank you. I'll do the finance one. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah. so I can take one. Sure. And then, so if you want to take, so Leah, if you want to take then leadership and management. Sure. As number two. Yep. And then... You know, John, if you want to just jump into finance and then we can go sure. to personnel management. Sure. Um, yep. And then we'll just kind of go from there. I mean, I think that ideally this will just lead itself, as Bernie said, too, into a dialogue. And if we hit those four questions with each candidate, we probably will touch on a lot of the and other lot of things. items. And then we can just jump mm -hmm. in if we feel like there's something else. Just right. speak over each other. It's fine. Good. You've got an hour to use. So. All right. So good. I think that's our uh, right. that's our approach. We did that. Are you prepared to take your first? Do we have to wait? Yeah. We have to wait because we we posted at a time. Okay. So. Okay. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? The origin of the word hosey. I'm gonna look that up right now. <laughs> Can I, you spell it for I don't me? Know it, it, H O S E Y. I like I go first. Yeah. Like that. I hosey. Yeah. It's a. I hosey. 
It's a term that we used back in the <laughs> 60s to earlier. Maybe to, the 60s. Yeah, the 60s. <laughs> in, the play, in the playground. You get to pick. That's right. It's your turn Verb. To pick. Ho said, ho saying, ho says. To place a claim on something before others can do so. There you go. That, there we that go. Was it. That was That's it. the thing I, new it. thing I learned Thank today. Thank God for computers. <laughs> and right. I, have, I have a list of words that no people no longer use. So I'm going to add that to it. <laughs> a list of words we just that use I no longer on. use. Like, like scallywaggers. We might be back here in three years. I, I always appreciate going fisticuffs. <laughs> Defenestration is my favorite. Defenestration. Mm. What is it? Defenestration. It's getting like pushed out of a window. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to write that one down to you now. Are you joking me? <laughs> oh, Carissa, so they're going to bring Carissa back into schools. Watch out now. Yeah, I know. Someone I'm said that. Price. That won't last. They should have never let, let no. Carissa go. <laughs> no, they shouldn't have, but I've um, stopped using it. Rita, do we have any new business or old business that we want to discuss in the interim well, like eight, eight minutes? minutes. Um, permitting software uh, for the building department is up and running and uh, building permits are online now. Uh, so, great. Uh, Nate was afraid it might uh, be overwhelming, but that's going along very well. Um, we did have a meeting yesterday, um, Nate, Franklin, Ryan Trahan, with Mass DOT over in the Taunton office regarding the Freetown Street County Road drainage. Yep. Um, of course, they would like us to pay for all the repairs on the county street side. Um, and we have been maintaining the, I, I don't know if it's called the culvert, um, but the first step is to apply for a permit uh, for the work that we're going to do on Freetown Street. So um, they will not pave anything on that part of co county road right at the end of Freetown Street. Okay. So I thought it was a productive meeting. Okay. And um, for your April 22nd agenda, I have Franklin on there for quite a few things. Okay. Because yesterday morning we met with Eric Kelly from EPG yep. regarding the storm water. Yep. Uh, the next contract coming up is approximately $70,000 for the first year of our permit. We still have that in a capital article, right? That had only 25000 Okay. Okay. Well, actually, it's in under capital uh, in his operating budget. Okay. So out of the 69,800, two of the, um, in the scope, out of the six items that EPG is going to do, two will be in the second year. Okay. 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 And we talked about right now um, what Franklin should do as far as the catch basin cleaning, because our current truck is um, needs repairs and this last season he had the um, street sweeping not yep. the street the catch basin material hauled off the property and that was at a cost of ten thousand dollars yeah so because we had talked about that briefly about if we contracted that out because that would allow for the catch basin cleanings to be taken off site and so john we had never really kind of finish that conversation so right. I guess we'll have that conversation on Monday so yeah. we had just the, the fact that you know we use our own equipment to do the catch basin cleaning but we had talked you know yeah. the, the issue is that giant pile of stuff over at the highway barn that right. is costing us more and more money every year to try to get rid of right so if we can find a way that it makes more sense maybe if it doesn't include yeah. additional capital additional labor because that would allow Franklin to have more of his own labor that's not kind of tied up I think he said it took three months or something to do that do the catch basins? I, think that, I think there was, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it was $50,000 that he had to, to clean it up. It was fifty dollars to $100,000, and he was going to work with the uh, uh, environmental partners to clean up that what's bud. on the, yeah. what's stuff, on yeah. the, what's that, on the property. And, uh, but nothing new. The, right. And, and, no, it's been obviously been sitting there for as long as I can remember. So you certainly want to get on that project. And yep. it wasn't, it's not a, a big deal because the pile is relatively clean. Yeah. It's a matter of getting through it, doing the property lines, redistributing it. But I thought that having Ryan Trahane work with him 
mm -hmm. and, he, and he did do some initial work on yep. that. But to clean that up, because to, to put more money into buying buildings, where the hell do you put them? You well, know, the piles in the middle of right. all the acres. Right, for all the capital So we need, to, we need to bite the dust and say, listen, we need that pile cleaned up. Yep. It's not a big deal. Well, and it's, it's yeah, it's for the future stuff, too. Because right. if we need more, you know, if we need to repair the right. equipment versus we have somebody right. else coming and do it, what's the We did talk it? about the, uh, in this capital was the, uh, was the bucket truck for trees. Yep. Not necessarily the truck in this year's capital to clean catch bases. Right. right. Yep. Yeah. Who's that and, one? And I don't know, did, you you were going to have a regional finance committee that, that <laughs> got canceled. That got canceled. But it's supposed to be last having night. having said that, when is our meeting with the finance committee? Is it Monday night? Tuesday night. It's Tuesday night. So I don't know. We need to make sure people are, not us, but the finance committee is available. It's. I, they, it's yes, school. they are. April 23rd. They uh, Well. It's the meeting. I, I don't know that because Katie DeRosia wasn't sure if she was coming. I don't know that George was coming. So what? they did and they didn't. Uh, you know, she's working on state budgets. I want to make sure that we, that they're going to be in attendance. That's all. Well, George had said he that worked for him. Um, okay. Jennifer, it was uh, worked okay. for Darren. Yeah, and Kate, Katie was, because she was at the uh, volunteer luncheon mm -hmm. today, and she was going to bail on. I said, "You can't bail on." I said, "We're we're down to the decision time." Yeah. And she had a fair amount of input on it. Yeah, and we should have the cherry sheet estimates should be updated by this weekend. Right. Um, so right. at least we'll see again thirty dollars per so, student. I so don't know what they were the giving thirty dollars is over and above Tw what? I think 20, it was even twenty. Was yeah. Twenty. I guess. So we'll get an extra what's ten, that? Ten dollars. Twenty-eight thousand dollars. You know, is what it'll. So it's only it's only the delta difference of ten to thirty. Yeah. Well, it's not, twenty. It's twenty not to thirty. 30. Twenty, 20 to thirty. 30. Yeah, right. because if we got, I don't know what was in there before. If it was 20 per student, you know, it's 30 per student. Well, but if they didn't grand. put, are they increasing it $30 over last year? I think it's, thir yeah, no. so whatever, I think what it is is everything that, I don't know what they put into the first iteration, if it was $20 a student, and now it's at $30 a student. So we'd anticipate $28,000. Right, or is, it, or is it $30 a student times 3,000 students? Is it $90,000? Yeah, I guess we'll know. So once I we looked at it that it could be ninety thousand okay. dollars, and certainly the transportation. Right, we don't know what that they, number. They continually talk about that. Yep. And the special needs, they might have a little bit extra there, but that was not a big number. Right. Uh, yeah. But the transportation could be. So I wasn't clear on the chapter seventy, if it's thirty dollars. Or ninety thousand yeah. dollars. I'd look at three thousand students. Whether it's twenty seven yeah. or twenty eight. We should know. Hopefully, I mean, we'll know by Monday when the sheets right. come out, so right. that so, we'll see that increase. So, I'm, I'm hoping that there's at least two hundred thousand, a hundred plus for transportation, and a hundred plus for Chapter Seventy. That would, yeah. Or the the, the uh, transportation will even be much greater than a hundred thousand right. dollars. Yep. So I I'm counting on that. You could say transportation. Let's say would be two hundred thousand dollars up, and if it isn't, then we have to pick up the delta difference yep. in the future of the year. Yep. But not at the town meeting floor, if you will. Yeah, I guess we'll have to talk about that too, because um, I mean, if one, if the forty S money comes in too, then oh, that's got to come in. Right. So, but we'll see when the cherry sheet comes out as to what that looks like, because those are the three big items that are kind of pending for our conversation on Tuesday. Okay for what's I, coming from the what, state level. Did, did Norm or Senator Rodericks come back with, yes, I've got your letters, yes, you're no, going to get the no, 40, yes? No. <laughs> well, Mike is obviously chair. the head of the yeah. chair of the House Ways Means. He will so advocate he does for us, yeah. So. He always is the biggest advocate for, um, I think it's Chelsea and Lakeville. Yeah, it's always funny, too, because they just put something out from the state, too, and they're like, you know, Southeastern Mass, like educational seminars on transit-oriented development and all the, you know, they yeah, always right, try to get more right, people to right. get in line with it. But and how they do never we get a reading money. out of Michael? Because Michael Rogers is the key to that. I, I talk to him all all the time. You talk like to said, him or his assistant? Mike. Okay. To Mike. So what He's is he saying on the 40S? 
I'll, you can count on me to get it. I mean, what and he'll is he'll advocate saying? for it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's only gone through the house, so now right. it's kicking over. So yeah, I'm, it's assuming, not to him I'm yet. assuming that's going to be in the number. Well, so. I don't, I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens through the house. Right. You know. Well, I, I think they're going to argue about those longer. I think, I think you'll know the Chapter 70 and the transportation number. Oh yeah. Fairly well, exactly. Next week. Well, I mean, we'll see the first iteration of it. Usually the Senate doesn't back down on it. I don't recall seeing a decrease from the House numbers when there's been an increase in Chapter 70 and or transportation. Sometimes I've seen it go up, but I've never seen it go down. Right. Will, so. they, be, will they be able to tell us about the, the uh, we'll call it the special education The circuit increase. breaker. Will they, they won't have that number for us. No, because the number's based on last year's. So, like, you don't know what the percentage is going to be, but I can pull up what we have gotten in the past. So <coughs> we can take a look at that, too. That's available, too, on, I think, Desi's website. Right. Right. It's 10 Are we ready? Very good. John Powley. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <coughs> Jose keeps changing the uh, temperature in here. I know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome and thank, thank you for thank uh, you. being here today with us. Very excited to be here. Very excited. <laughs> we're, we're very excited for this process. I think, you know, Certainly, just by way of you know introduction, we've been kind of planning this. I've been on the board for five years. John's mm -hmm. been on for seven. Leah's just recently appointed. Uh, a week and a half. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, you know, we've been working with Rita, who's our current town administrator, for all of that time. Um, and you know, she's really meant a lot to this town. And we're excited and sad at the same time sure. about the transition. And we're you know happy to have some great candidates that certainly have been brought before us today. So. We're excited to really learn about you and what your skill set is and what you bring to the table. And okay. I think so by way of, you know, if you want to give us a little introduction about yourself, you know, why you're here, um, a little bit about, you know, what you know about Lakeville and why it's appealed to you as a community that you want to serve in. Okay. So. Well, good morning. My name is Lisa Green. I'm here today at, to apply for the assistant town, the town administrator position. Um, I'm an attorney. I work for Social Security and Disability, but I was a selectman, I've been a selectman in Whitman, uh, I was elected in 2011. Actually, um, I had really no interest in municipal government at all until um, I started working with my son's baseball team, um, volunteering, and as he went through baseball, um, I noticed our fields didn't have any scoreboards. So I started working on a project to get some scoreboards in Whitman and um, wrote letters to all the businesses asking for donations for school boards. And we actually were successful at getting two school boards for our fields. And I actually love doing that. Um, I did something for the, for the community. The school boards look great. I uh, liked doing that so much when I saw um, there was an opening for selectmen, decided to throw my name in and uh, ran for selectmen, and I was elected. I was very happy, very excited. Um, and as I began working as a selectman, um, learned more and more about municipal government and really loved it. Um, but it was only a part time, only a few hours. So um, I was working for Social Security at the same time, but really was really driven towards municipal government and was working to learn more on municipal government. Um, and then I was reelected to a second term as selectman. And when our assistant town administrator announced that he was um, resigning to take another position, I made the decision that I wanted to do more on a full-time basis to work for municipal government and um, stepped on, down from selectmen and was appointed as the assistant town administrator, um, which I love. Um, learning more and more and really getting into municipal government, and this is where my passion is. Um, people ask me how I like my job, I say I love it every day. Um, and that's why I'm here. Uh, Lakeville is very, um, Whitman is a very small town. We're only seven square miles. Um, Lakeville, 36 square miles, much bigger. But the two towns are very similarly situated. We have budgets that are the same. 
Um, we have um, regional school districts that we both work with, and Lakeville has a lot more benefits than Whitman does. Whitman's a bedroom community. We don't have a lot of land, so we have very little commercial, very little industry. Lakeville, a lot more land. You have more commercial, more industry. Um, so you're, you're able to keep your taxes down because you have commercial and industry. Um, it's a beautiful town. I love the water. Um, I have relatives that live in Lakeville. I went to the Mocking Bill Hill Christmas tree farm to get our Christmas tree. So, and there is a, um, I'm an antique car um, enthusiast, and there is a car show with a star drive-in on Wednesday nights during the summer that um, my father and I and my uncle frequent. <laughs> Previously owned by the mayor of Taunton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> star drive-in. And that's why I'm here. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, you know, in your current position mm -hmm. with the assistant town administrator, what are the things that you find to be your strengths in terms of, you know, is it budgeting, procurement, does it relate more, you know, do you like the economic development side, dealing with the schools? I mean, what, what's kind of your day-to-day -day passion when you're there? Um, well, some of my strengths right now um, are procurement. I'm certified by the state as a municipal certified public purchasing officer. Um, I also handle all the grants. Uh, we're a green community. So I handle all green communities from the application to the closeout. Um, I coordinate the projects. I work very well with Seth Pickering, who's from Lakeville. Mm -hmm. um, I coordinate all the projects. I oversee all of the work, uh, payment of the invoices. I work with Jane Fister at the DOER. Um, to basically get them everything you want and make sure we get all the grant monies. Um, I coordinate inspections for the projects. I, we're working with PRISM as well, Energy Services, who I see Lakeville has worked with um, on all of our projects. Um, we've just finished our biggest green communities, which is the street, we did our street lights and LEDs, which I coordinated the entire project, oversaw the whole project. Um, we do green uh, community compact grants. Um, and with procurement, I do all of the procurement for the town. So I draft all the invitation to bids, request for proposals. I handle all of the advertising. I handle the bid openings, the references. I draft the contracts um, and send those out to the, com the companies and get those on board. I handle a lot of the human resources. Uh, when fo employees go out on uh, leave, if, if it's injury or sick, I handle the FMLA paperwork. Uh, workers' comp, I would work with Maya. Um, I also handle the insurance portions with um, our town assets, going over those documents to make sure they're accurate, all the town vehicles. Um, I just handle just a number of different things. Um, our budget this year has been crazy. Whitman's going through some very tough times, so town administrator Lyman and myself are constantly uh, I'm plugging in new mon numbers into the budget, so I work with the budget where I plug in different numbers and then put, give it to him to, he puts all his formulas in. Um, I've sat in with personnel with um, labor relations, with the bargaining. I'm sat in with every union for bar with our bargaining, um, got the bargaining uh, sessions. Um, I am a member of the Massachusetts Municipal Association, a member of the MMPA. I'm also on the um, policy committee for personnel and labor relations, where we watch out for any type of legislative that's going to impact uh, personnel and labor relations for our municipalities, um, and just uh, any in residence too. I'm in constant contact with any residents that come in to serve them, to help them with whatever problems, concerns that they have. Um, I think my strengths are that I'm very responsive. People know that if they come to me with a question or a concern or a problem. I'm going to get an answer, I'm going to get a solution, and I'm going to get back to them in a reasonable amount of time, which is within a couple of days. Even if to say, I'm working on this for you, I'm going to take care of it, and I will be in contact with you. And I'll even contact people just to let them know where we are if I'm working on a problem. Um, I always, people can always come to me, my door is always open. Any problems with employees, they come in and talk to me, they know I'm someone they can talk to. Um, being an attorney, um, I have all ethical um, values, and I know that that's, people know that they can come to me and I'm going to fix whatever their problem is and help them out, and they, they know that I'm going to retain the confidence, the confidential information, that it's not going to go anywhere. So I, I've gr grown that trust within our organization, within our community. 
Um, How about your relationship with the board of selectmen and kind of the, I mean, obviously you were, you sat on the other side of it too. Yes. So, um, yes. But you know, in that kind of political realm and mm -hmm. the decision making and difficult decisions and things like that, can you give us a little bit about, you know, um, those well, circumstances? I think with my, my background and training, um, I look at everything on a factual basis, uh, emotions and personal, I, I am able to keep aside when necessary and make the decision based on the facts, the research, um, based on what the, just listening to people talk about how they feel about things and, and getting input. I can make a decision based on educa an, educa an educated decision and not based on emotional or personal feelings. Um, I've, I've been able to keep that aside um, when, when you have very difficult decisions. You have to do what's in the best interest of the community and the town. Um, in, in, the, in the residence overall, um, what my, my personal feelings may be. It's important to be able to set that aside. Um, I, I have a great relationship with our Board of Selectmen. Um, I was on the board when four, three of these gentlemen were on the board. Um, I think I really um, earned a respect um, for my professionalism with the, with the Board of Selectmen. Um, they come to me with anything. They, when they have a request or a task, ta they, um, I've actually just completed a selecting handbook policy, which they recently adopted. I um, worked on a personnel manual at the direction of the, the Board of Selectmen. Anything they ask me to do, they know that I'm going to present a very good work product back to them. Um, they asked me to do some research on a selectman handbook of other towns. I pulled that research put together a nice summary for them, and then went over the information. And it was complete information that didn't leave them with any questions afterwards. Um, and I'm very proud of my work product, so I always will present something that is factual, fully researched, and if you do have questions, I will get the answers right away. Uh, reach out to networks, reach out to other communities, um, to colleagues, and get your answers and questions um, right away, basically. Great. Turn that over to you, Leah. Um, clearly, you're sitting before us with a really great resume. So, you know, to ask a question about, you've already talked a lot about the leadership and the management, but um, can you just give us some examples of your approach to working, you know, with a team, mentoring perhaps, mm -hmm. new hires, newer folks, newer board members? throughout the town, not just, you know, in the selectman's office. Um, and, um, yeah, I guess that's how you would handle, you know, those kinds of management um, questions, problems. Oh, sure, sure. Because I'm new. <laughs> in case you can't tell. <laughs> um, well, one of, my, one of my best mentoring um, experiences actually when I was at Social Security. I worked in the office of the general counsel. And what they did, I was actually a case manager, uh, paralegal leader, case manager. And what they did was they had details. So they brought in employees from other agency, other areas of Social Security um, into our office. And then our employees would go to those offices to learn about the different divisions because Social Security is a monster um, agency. So they had someone from a field office. These are the folks that when people apply for disability or need anything for Social Security, they'd go into an office and they'd work with somebody. So they had someone from the field office come to, into our office, the general counsel's office. And I was charged with mentoring this person to teach them how um, we worked with cases, um, go over a whole case with her, and just help. Because what we did was we watched the court systems, the docketing, they call it. Anytime the attorneys who were representing plaintiffs filed any kind of court documents, they're filed with the court, they would come in our office. And what we would do was pull those documents out, log them in, um, summarize them, and, and sum, submit them to the attorney. So I mentored um, this person who really didn't know anything about law or anything about court cases on how to read those documents, um, how to look into the court systems, log them in. So I basically taught her the whole job. And by the time of her details, she felt that she really loved what we did in the general counsel's office. Um, so it was very rewarding. More of a personal approach, not just here's the stuff. Ask. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You have to put that personal in there. Um, 
if you don't if you don't put your you know passion and and show somebody that you really love something, I don't think they really get the whole program. Like I will only tell somebody, okay, you have to do A, B, C, and D. I'll explain why we do each section, um, you know, and then. I like to find the most efficient way to do things. So if I can find shortcuts that are going to achieve the same goal, I'll, I'll let them know what the shortcut is. Um, you know, it's going to accomplish the same thing, but yet you'll do it in a quicker time and not expend a lot of work because you know you're going to have a lot of other things to do. Um, and I'm very approachable, very friendly. Uh, people know they can ask me any question, and I'll help them anyway. If people are in town hall and they look lost, and I'm, I'll ask them, can I help you? They're and often you, lost there. It's a weird <laughs> building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, can I help you find a, somewhere? And they'll tell me where they're looking for, and, I, and I'll direct them or I'll walk them to that area. Um, our elevator in Town Hall in Whitman is kind of hidden, so people have trouble finding it. I'll walk we people. Have an uh, <laughs> I'll actually walk people to where the elevator is because it's kind of hard to tell them. Mm -hmm. um, but anybody knows. I mean, e e any other department will come into me and ask me about how to do something. Um, we have police officers, or the chief of, of the fire, chief of police, will ask me how to do something, and I'll show them and help them any way I can. So, can you give me like an example? So. Um, you know, as much as Rita looks completely calm and, uh, you know, so an example of a situation where th there's a lot of fires, if you want to call it that, to be put out all the time, you know, town hall. And kind of give us an example of a situation that you've been in where you've had 17 different things going on at the same time, you know, how you kind of manage those things, how you prioritize them, and how you kind of handle the stress of that type of situation. Okay. You can, I, I can give you like a minute or two to think about that because, I mean, that's kind of like... <laughs> You know. Well, I can answer the stress question really quickly. I, um, I, I, I've committed myself to a, a routine, a, a, to a gym routine. Um, I go to the gym at least three or four times a week, and I do my exercises in my classes. Um, that, I think, is a huge help to how you handle stress um, and how you're able to clear your mind and regroup. So I, that's how I handle stress. Uh, my gym routine really helps with that. And, we have a lot of fires that need to be put out. Basically, you have to try and really prioritize which one is going to bring out the most ramifications if you don't tackle that first. Um, I always have my legal hat on, and I always look at the ramifications and what's going to happen if this isn't if we put this off another minute. So I'll look at each one that way. Which one is going to have the worst ramifications? Finish that quick. You know, let's tackle this first. And it's good to bring in people to help with some of the other fires, if possible. Um, it's good to be able to have uh, lean on some of those other people to help you if you have many things going on at the same time. Can you time. expand on that with like when you've kind of delegated, how you've mm -hmm. delegated, like a situation like that? Mm -hmm. um, our administrative assistant um, is very good, Lori. And sometimes we have folks. Who, businesses who need licenses um, to operate. Um, and if I'm doing an investigation or whatever, I might ask her to make some phone calls for me, um, if she can type up a letter for me, because um, I know this letter needs to be out today by 5, but I don't really have time because I'm trying to deal with this. So I'll ask her if she can type a letter and send it out for me that day, and, and she's very willing to do that. Um, make some phone calls, um, she's very willing to do that. We only have three people in our office. So she's really the person that I can only delegate to because then we have our town administrator who's got his own things he's dealing with. Right. Um, so that's really my delegation um, experience um, based on the staff that we have in our office. And any like employee disciplinary action experience, maybe not in what you're doing now, but you know, in any of your, your history? Yes. Um, actually, at last town meeting last year, we had two employees who were, who were um, acting very badly, very inappropriately at town meeting. Um, they were two of our checkers, and they sat in the back of the room um, saying very inappropriate things about town officials. And they were loud enough so that uh, residents heard them, and then some uh, town hall employees heard them. So after these reports came back to us, um, I was tasked with the investigate, handling the investigation. So I spoke with the witnesses, um, got the information about the, what was going on, what was said. Um, I typed up a whole investigation, the whole investigation, which when I do something like that, I do it exactly as I hear it. I don't put my own interpretations 
into something, I, I, this is exactly what was said to me. So that nobody questions what somebody said. Somebody can't come back and say, oh, I didn't say that. That's how she interpreted it. It's, I, it's their words exactly. So then I needed to sit down with each of the ladies and, and ask them, talk with them, um, and then put that information. And then we had to sit with them and actually tell them that they were not going to be invited back to be checkers because of this behavior. Even though one of them denied all of the information, but we had 11 people who stated otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, we need to sit with them and, and talk with them. And even though both ladies were very defensive about what was going on, it's very important to maintain calmness and to show them that your emotions are not elevating as they were. Um, and at the end, we needed to let these two ladies go. Um, and that was one of my main um, uh, contributions to personnel. Mm -hmm. um, I have sat in when other department heads have had to speak with employees about things as being on time, um, having a pattern of leaving early on Thursdays when we're closed on Fridays. Um, I sit in on all of those with all the different department heads. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll, I'll be addressing some financial questions, but just to address a couple of things that you said. You are a green community and you deal with Seth Pickering. Yes. And you talk about $655,000 worth of, of grants mm -hmm. in your cover letter to, to uh, Bernie Lynch. And are those green community grants or those are other grants? Uh, uh, combining everything, green community grants plus other grants. That amount is, is basically green community grants. Okay. Okay. Um, when I actually did do a spreadsheet of all the grants that I brought in, it was actually about 684000 uh, because there were some grants through Maya, um, which is the insurance um, that I sustained. Um, I also sustained some um, sustainable recyclable grants because the town of Whitman we recycle, um, and we participate in a lot of different recycling type of um, programs. I recently implemented a textile recycling in Whitman, where we have a company that comes out and picks up textiles to get them out of our trash. Um, so we've gotten some grants through that um, textile, uh, the Department of Energy, uh, I mean um, environmental, um, and community compact grants as well. Okay. Our, our town tries to get about $250,000 worth of green community grants, mm -hmm. we're hoping, per year. Okay. Because we finished the town hall section of it in those types of buildings now we're focusing on the schools so that was uh, good to hear because you're an attorney or an active attorney and you have experience in that does the town retain uh, attorneys like Copen and Page or, or oh yes we have town office? council yes um, okay. in Braintree um, but a lot of times it's it's helpful because I I, I can do a lot of research and read the law books and understand. Um, and then sometimes they'll ask me for any preliminary research that I have done. And, and I'll talk to our attorneys, um, the, our count, town council, uh, with what I found out or what, what I see or what I've heard and uh, what I've researched. And, and I think they appreciate that. Um, so they, they allow me to be part of any th type of litigation as well, um, any type of litigation that's going on. Um, I mean, we have, uh, with our police, we have litigation going on with personnel issues, and I am very much a part of everything that goes on with any type of litigation. Um, okay. I'm going to get into some, some specific ones. I know you're a regional school system, but mm -hmm. is it Whitman Hanson still? Yes. Yeah. So are all the schools regional, or are the ones that are physically in Whitman per se, or is it a from elementary up through high school regional. How is, how is that? It's elementary up through high school. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Hello, hello. Welcome. Let's 
So welcome. Thank you. So uh, I know, Maureen, that you know you kind of know a little bit about what's going on here, but I figured that what I do is just kind of give you the overview. Um, you know, we all know Rita's been with us for a number of different years and provided some wonderful service for the town over the years. So we have big shoes to fill, of course, in this environment. But um, we want to just kind of get to know you a little bit more, and if you can just give some reasons why you're interested in this position, a little bit about your history, your background, and uh, I, I'm going to say, you know, kind of what you know about Lakeville and, and what attracts you to this position in yep. Lakeville, especially coming from industry into this position. You know, what are you looking to get out of it? Okay. So first I'll start with my background. Um, I've lived in this general area pretty much my whole life. Grew up in Bridgewater, lived in Middleborough for a while, came to Lakeville to live. Um, I was in my 30s when I had decided that I wanted to pursue an MPA and start pursuing um, the task of, uh, of moving away from corporate life to, uh, to moving to uh, a more of a public position. And town administrator has always been the position that was in mind. Um, I believe we have lots of opportunities in life to do things, but none as impactful as doing things locally. And so for me, it's always been town government. Um, and then when I started to pursue my MPA, it was town government focused, um, everything that I uh, started to go towards, uh, town government focused. And every town I've been in, I've made sure that I've been not only part of the town, but tar part of the government of the town. So even though I, I came through the background of having um, uh, a good corporate career, it, that was always about ambition, and this is more about aspiration. Um, this is the type of position I've aspired to, and uh, this is something that I've, uh, I've had maybe on the back burner, but always on the forefront of my mind um, since I began my career as, a, as an adult. Um, and as far as what I know about the town, um, I, could, I could say I'm, I'm pretty involved in what goes on in the town, um, and not just from the, the, uh, the Facebook boards. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty involved. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with our problems with uh, with the school budgets. I'm uh, familiar with the problems um, that we're going to be seeing uh, with the Chapter 70 formulas and the special ed uh, dollars and the transportation dollars. I'm, uh, I'm very familiar with that. Um, I'm, I'm familiar with um, the, the constraints that we have on our steps and levels in the budgets and all the union uh, bargaining going on. Familiar with the, the local issues that are centered around right now the pond where a lot of people have concerns about the pond and and what you guys are trying to do to mitigate that um, other issues that I, I know that are coming up are, are housing issues um, with uh, with our need to have the affordable housing and I think we're at a seven percent right now affordable housing um, and that has more to do with the fact that they didn't allow all the sterling place to count to our housing and that we're having a little bit of a boom now and that's going to have to come back and we're going to have to have more housing as part of our plan in the future. Um, I also know that we have an unequal relationship with our regional partner in Freetown as they continue to gain um, what I see a business tax demographic and, and we're not so I can see you know some equal unequalness in there as far as just going around what's on the kind of the general collective of the town right now and being moderately still involved even though I'm not on the finance committee anymore. Um, and as far as what I think um, I can bring to this position, um, I think you guys are very fortunate to have Rita who lived in town and was uh, not in a bad way, a complete townie um, <laughs> and very accessible um, to the general public. Um, and very knowledgeable about uh, issues that may not come to the attention of the board uh, because she's so accessible to the public. Um, I think I could bring that to the role too as being uh, not only a member of the town but someone that's a pretty visible figure. I'm on the soccer fields or on the football fields or, or out, uh, out and about. Um, I'm, I'm pretty approachable. Uh, I, maybe it's the height, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm pretty approachable, so people come right up to me and ask me questions because they know I'm really interested in the town. Um, I think I showed that interest back in 2013 
Um, and Mitzi actually took advantage of a program that I was working with at the college where I, uh, I advocated for and, and won the, uh, the right to uh, do a local government leadership program for the members of the town. Um, so we had 11 attendees for that session. Um, and um, everyone got to learn things about housing, about zoning, about human resources, um, and a lot of people ran for subsequent office after they, uh, they went through that course. Um, I, I think uh, I've always had an eye towards community service and constituent service. Uh, even when I wasn't in a position to, uh, to be an official leader, I think I'm a, a non-official leader. Uh, and uh, as far as skills that I would bring, um, I have extensive experience uh, in uh, leadership um, in general. Most of my positions were manager positions. Some positions I had, I had 250 people work under me. Um, and then some other positions, 10 people under me. I'm very comfortable with performance management metrics. Um, and being able to deliver reviews and coach people and to coach towards a common goal. Um, it, it's something that I would consider a strength of mine and uh, a communicator, um, someone that can kind of take a lot of data and synthesize it and make sure it goes where it needs to go. Um, and um, as general skills, I have uh, budgeting skills, which is evidenced by um, working on uh, the finance committee also. Uh, budgeting skills, um, I've done extensive procurement, uh, both for uh, what I do uh, currently in my position at uh, Martinetti, and when I was a member of the cable committee for Middleborough, um, I actually helped with all the procurement to set up the studio. So I'm familiar with all the Chapter 30B laws, and all the parameters therein. Um, and, uh, and I've sat in on union negotiations when I worked in on Stop and Shop. Um, I've been part of a labor management board at Stop and Shop. Um, I've been part of search committees for the town um, for various positions. Um, let's see, uh, is there something specific that I can uh, kind of give you some uh, yeah. insight into? I think, you know, one of the things you were kind of touching on, too, related to what you believe your strengths happen to be. Sure. So I know you just mentioned kind of personnel management. So if you could just kind of touch on, you know, what you believe to be the things that you bring to the table specifically, you know, in terms of municipal management. Okay. Well, I have a specific leadership style. Um, my management style depends on who I'm coaching at the time, but my leadership style stays, stays the same. I believe uh, clear lines of communication, clear expectations, um, uh, and I set them up front for whomever I'm working with. And then I make sure I give them the tools that they need to succeed. It's a little joke that I, I like to set people up for success instead of failure. And then I'm monitoring them as they go through their process to make sure that their goals are aligned with the overall goals. In my case, it's company goals. Um, and that the decisions they're making they're embedded in their head what the culture is. So when they're having to do these by themselves exercises where I'm not intervening, they know what I'm gonna say. They already know how I feel about something prior to them even bringing it to me. So then it cuts down on a lot of communication that doesn't need to happen because they understand their role, they understand what I'm looking for, and they understand what the company's looking for. And I think that is a leadership style that translates into anything that I'm going to be trying to accomplish. Um, I think it's been very successful for me. Um, it makes sure I'm uh, fishing where the fish are. If, if I see someone struggling with that type of um, very specific communication um, and very specific performance management, then I know I need to get involved more. And that's, that's more my individual management style. And that would be more of a coaching and, and, and uh, the back and forth and, and seeing where we need to get to. Um, and I think that's, that's something um, that you, you can do successfully with a lot of department heads when we, we see them struggling. Um, is It's that time. It's that face time. It's knowing what they need and knowing that, that you're there to support them to get to the next level because we're all working on the same team. Great. Can you give us an example of difficult situation that you found yourself in, I think, more so as a manager, you know, dealing with either a disciplinary action or something where 
you know, it was a, a difficult decision that you had to make? Sure. It. Sure. So um, when I, uh, m my last position, uh, not this one currently, um, I became direct supervisor over um, people that had been there 30 years longer than I had. Um, and it, it had created a little bit of a conflict. Whether they liked me or not, whether they respected me or not, it was a conflict in their eyes because they had put their time in um, and then I had jumped in over. I had one person in specific um, lean in and tell me when I, when I got the promotion that I was five when he started there. So he had a little bit, yeah, he had a little bit of an issue uh, with the fact that we'd been there. Uh, <laughs> it, it was funny and sad at the same time. Um, so having him as an ally, I, I had to decide whether I was going to try to charm him out of it or try to try to bully him out of it or try to make sure that you know he knew who that I was his boss and instead I decided to know that I was there to support him with whatever he needed and that I wasn't there to basically change everything that he did but rather to make sure that he was aligning himself with the company goals and so that was my job my job was to not lord over him. My job was to help him to get to the next level or to, to see some paths that he might not have been able to see on his own be, by virtue of my different perspective. And we started to develop a much easier relationship out of that. Um, and I am happy to say that when I transitioned into my new position, I actually got a card at home from him saying that he will miss me. And it was, it was a very big feather in my cap uh, because he's uh, not known for being an easy guy. <laughs> so, but yes, that was hard for me because it was nothing real that was the problem. It wasn't an obstacle in the way. It wasn't, it wasn't some type of event that had happened that was really bad. It was just a very uncomfortable fit for him. And for him to feel like he wanted to be part of that team, I needed to find a way to do that without kind of losing my authority over the position or, or trying to make him fit where he didn't. Great. Uh, you want to jump into finance? Sure. All right. The, uh, I'll get into a couple of specifics, though. Uh, one will be is... Uh, do you have any experience and responsibilities in collective bargaining now? Stop and shop was one of your jobs. Perhaps you could step it back in there. Sure. Because they're all on strike now. Sure. That, that just, See that what happens that's when just I leave. The, you left stop and shop is on strike. But do you have any specifically collective bargaining experience because that's one of the roles that the town administrator in Lakeville does. I do and our philosophy way back then at Stop and Shop was same side of the table bargaining. Um, we would make sure that we weren't just arguing because we were on opposite ends of the table and we actually even you know made our body language on the same side of the table. Uh, I'm sure you've all gone through this with um, with the contentiousness that kind of just automatically happens when people of a union think that the goal of the people on the other side of the table is to take something away from them. Um, again, it all comes down to making sure goals are communicated clearly and, um, and specifically the role that I played um, was um, I gave, um, uh, we all had separate union uh, personnel or reps that covered certain areas for uh, for stop and shop, and I was on the Cape, um, and I worked with the gentleman um, side by side on the Cape to make sure that all of uh, his concerns were um, addressed in a way that I could bring back to the board um, and let them know ahead of time what was coming down the pipeline, so we could address it um, in in ourselves in our collective selves before we went back to the table and we sat and talked with them. Um, because what was happening a lot is um, there was uh, multiple people at the table that were spouting different things that their unions wanted. I don't know if you know, it, uh, but Stop and Shop has three different unions per store. So the union heads you know, kind of rely on what goes on and stuff is very regional. So um, we were able to kind of come together and take things off the table that we were going to propose but we knew would be contentious 
and it kind of made a smoother process through it. And I think they saw that we came to the table to get to a better understanding and not just to take things away from them. And it never got to the point where, uh, where there was a strike. Um, we were very lucky that the, the issues were not as large as the ones uh, that are right now. But at the same time, most of the time in every interaction that I found, whether it's union bargaining or anything, most people don't always need you to solve their problems. They're really looking to be heard. And a lot of times when you allow them that ability to be heard and, they, and you can give them that feedback on where your thought process is and not just give them an answer, you're actually helping them understand where you're coming from and you can understand where they're coming from and it becomes a more person to person thing instead of adversarial. Uh, I'll get into some financial management questions specifically, but just refresh my memory. When were you on the finance committee and for how long? I was have? on for three years and I think it was 2013 to 2016. Okay. Who was the school superintendent then? Do you recall? Um, well, was it Christine Nash in interim? No. No? She was not on there. Uh, Mr. Medeiros had been at the end okay. of my term and okay. at the very beginning um, the gentleman that went to Situate, uh, yeah. McCarthy. McCarthy, John McCarthy. Yes, McCarthy. And then Jessica Huzang Huzinger. Yeah. Huzinger. <laughs> yes, she was the interim at that uh, yeah. point. Yeah. Okay, that just puts me in the, yep. in the time frame yeah. of that. Yeah, it, it takes so, me a minute to get the dates right, now. <laughs> right, right. And uh, certainly, as you know, that 60% of our budgets is towards the school system, which is not unusual in our town or any other town. It's usually, you know, 55 to sure. 75 percent. And uh, what process uh, or experience do you have in the financial management uh, doing budgets, <coughs> programs, and practices that you think you could save money at? That type of thing. Uh, so maybe give me some of the financial background that you might have? Um, so right now, um, I am on a board for my company, um, and we're the Women's um, Alcohol Beverage Symposium, and I am in charge of the budget, and um, we are approaching it in a different way. Uh, we have um, a set budget from the company, and we're raising funds also. So um, we have uh, a lot of different people that are bringing things to the table um, in that respect. Um, and they all want different things for our event, um, and my job is to keep them on budget. Um, so uh, we are fortunate enough that there is uh, something different than what you have in the town. If we go over budget, we can go and reach out to another supplier and try to fundraise again. That's obviously a very different model than what you have. And I think all the stakeholders need to understand, and stakeholders meaning um, everyone from the school, the school committee, the superintendent, that we have a finite amount of resources that can be allocated uh, when it comes to a school budget and a town budget, and how much of that keeps growing. It is a problem that will only be satisfied um, by throwing more money at it if it's not contained. It's very unique, and I always thought it was uh, strange that uh, towns do not have actual control over the school budgets. Um, because there is that whole oversight part where we can make suggestions. Um, but I think they do need to be held accountable to being within that 2.5% threshold. Otherwise, there is no sustainability and there's no ability to continue to grow the other parts of the town or support the other parts of the town if we're continuing to feed an ever-growing school budget. So as far as cost controls uh, in doing that, being alerted as, as much as possible to what they're looking for or what increases that they're seeing down the road and being able to keep reiterating, you know, our position on, you know, this is what we have allocated. Anything else is taking away from somewhere else. And when I said communicating to the stakeholders, the people of the town need to know that because the school does a really good job at, you know, saying that they need more funds and that they need to be supported. Um, however, they also need to know that they're, grow they're outgrowing the rest of the town 
and the town needs to be apprised of what those impacts are. How would you suggest that the town be better able to be informed about those issues? I mean, I think that's been a big concern is that people just don't pay attention. Um, I, I would love to say social media would, would, could play a much bigger part, but I do not see the response in social media that I thought I would for the stuff that gets you know put out there by the town. The town is doing a good job saying what's going on and, and who's here, but I mean, honestly, I, I don't see very many people here from the town either. Big crowd behind <laughs> yeah. Me. Like, you can't turn around and see them. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me is concerning. That's a lack of engagement from the town. And that lack of engagement can be addressed in, in multiple ways. But I would hope that we would have more, um, I don't know, engagement in a structured way. Both social media, because that's prevalent and it's in everyone's homes and they can access it in their PJs, which is always important. But have more events that are able to, they're able to gather at. And, and I know we had some stuff, the, the winter fest and, and some of that stuff. I think that helps with engagement and I think that really um, allows people to look at things, but the only thing I really see that engages um, some of the people is controversy, and that seems to uh, that seems to bring out the engagement. So if we could manufacture some controversy, and get them in the door. No, um, but I do believe um, the best uh, way that we can do that right now is having a, so a strong but controlled social media presence and being able to connect to people um, the way they would like to be connected to. So I hate to be the one that say, say, do an engagement survey of the town on how they would like to be communicated with, but I know a big popular feature that just happened with the website is um, there's a section on the website you can go to and they'll send alerts. Believe it or not, people are thrilled at that. That is a big, you know, touchstone for people. They're like, oh, I don't have to look for it. It comes right towards me. So. Um, some manner of that, but I do believe face to face that you can't uh, kind of circumvent the need to be able to to talk to people and be heard to people. So just a presence in the uh, in the overall town and let people know where you're at. Let people know that they can come talk to you. It isn't that that uh, it's always the schools because even the municipal government itself, whether it be police, fire, town workers, the DPWs. Uh, everyone wants a piece of the action. So if we don't operate within the 2.5% to 3%, then overrides are the next step. And I'm not adverse to them. It's just the people have to understand how it affects them. Absolutely. You know, long, long term. So there are, the solution to the problem is either control your expenses better and or a combination of, of overrides, and I'm not necessarily for or against them. Uh, and as you said, putting them throughout on social media, yeah. trying to have some focus groups, whatever, so people understand sure, because the ramifications. Especially, as, as people are very visual um, in general. I think people are more visual than than they are um, in any other manner capable of, of understanding things. And breaking out the budget and explaining the lines of the budget uh, before we get to budget time and having a, a budget narrative uh, before uh, we get to town meeting floor and for people to understand not just the numbers but the reasons behind the numbers because everyone knows a budget is just a reflection of your priorities and they need to know where the priorities lay and that we are fully funding them according to the budget of the town um, and anything else is you know detrimental financially, but it needs to be it come from somewhere. It, we just can't manufacture it out of thin air. And a, a lot of people are very emotional about the subject, and, and they think that, uh, that it's just uh, this, if the school needs budget money, that they need the budget money, and that it doesn't have to be part of a bigger picture. Um, so that's my thought on that. Thank you. Can you talk about a difficult management situation that you found yourself in where you needed to make a difficult decision? Difficult management decision. Um, so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, a difficult management decision. Um, 
I'm doing a lot of projects lately, and I, and I do a lot of cross-functional management of other people. Um, and the way my position is stated, I'm kind of pushing things up and over to people. So um, I get what could be considered a lot of pushback um, because I'm kind of the agent of change um, in, in the company, uh, being the director of sales and operations planning. Um, so for my management um, style right now, I'm managing people that are outside of my, not control, but outside of my purview, as, as it were. So I have to decide when to involve their manager um, and that becomes tricky. I have, um, I have one person in specific who, uh, whenever I initiate a new, uh, I, I, well, I hate to say initiate an initiative, but initiate a new initiative, um, they come back and they campaign against it and try to get the other people to, oh, this is horrible, this is, this is, this is all that. So now I've had to change my management style and instead of talking to everyone at the same time and giving them the same message, I have to single this person out first and I have to make sure that they understand the message and that there's no ambiguity between what I'm asking them to do and what to do and then they, uh, then they can't spread that type of thing so I'm kind of taking the aspirin before the headache uh, when, when managing to this person because I have to manage to 35 different people, if I have someone kind of against me with, within there, I have to find a way to manage them. So the way I manage them is I make them my ally. I make them be the person that I test with and I say, how do you feel about this? How do you do feel that? And I've absolutely, I don't know, mitigated um, that backlash that I had been experiencing for the last few months. So is it a specific um, delegation down? No, but I'm delegating to the side and slightly up. Um, so it, it, it is a management skill. If that answers your question, I hope. Yeah, thanks. Um, I have more of a personal question regarding me. So I'm new to the board. Um, looking at your resume, knowing a few things that you've done, I would say we're fairly equal in some ways on our actual municipal experience. Um, so I'm just curious why clearly you're capable to do the job, I would think, you know, with everything that you've told us. But I'm just a little leery about your not actual municipal experience. Sure. Um, only because, let's say, you know, the board hadn't changed, you would have had three very experienced selectmen, mm -hmm. but I feel like I keep saying I'm on a learning curve. Mm -hmm. I mean, our new fire chief, I think, is wonderful and great, but still new to Lakeville. Mm -hmm. um, we could potentially have the chief of police retiring, I don't know, you know, whatever his time frame is. So now we have another new player. Mm -hmm. I feel like... I mean, you seem very capable, but I feel like a lot of newness, I, I feel like we almost, I'm looking for a little bit more municipal experience. Underst so, understood. you know, tell me, you know, what it is that makes you feel like you can jump in and just hit the ground running and not miss a beat, so to speak. So, I'd love to say I wouldn't miss a beat, but I'm sure <laughs> that there is going to be a learning curve. Um, I've, I've never been challenged in a way that I've absolutely fell on my face before in any type of new situation that I've been in, but my strategy in taking this position is partnering. Um, in the MPA program, I made a lot of, uh, I, I'm going to say, lasting relationships of fellow MPA candidates, a lot of them who are um, town administrators or town managers now or former t town managers. Um, I, I do believe that I have a strong network in that way for kind of the, um, the unknowns uh, and all that, but I do spend a great deal of time on the MMA website. I am up to date on uh, new laws and legislation and stuff that probably someone that is coming from, a, would be coming from a strictly um, 
corporate backout wouldn't have. have um, right. it's, it's kind of my passion. Um, so being able to have that passion where I've educated myself, not only through the formal channels of the Master's in Public Administration program, but educating myself towards uh, state guidelines that come out. Um, I'm on all the email lists for the, for the um, Department of Revenue, uh, I'm DCR, DCR, DCR. <laughs> uh, Department of Revenue. Um, I read everything that comes out from SERPED. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with uh, most of the, the, like the Community Preservation Act changes that just happened over the week. Um, I'm kind of a junkie for it. I'm kind of you know, interested in all of those aspects and have kept myself abreast and aware in preparation for being able to make a leap to a position like this. Um, so I, I do believe personally that I have a, an enormous capacity to learn. Um, I, I, it, it's something that I enjoy a lot of. Um, I, I, uh, I don't have any worries that I won't be able to learn something, but I do, um, like you said, just the newness of it, I want to make sure that I get great guidance from places, and I do have all those kind of touchstones set up for myself, uh, people that I've reached out to before I even decided to apply for the position, and, um, and they've, they are committed um, to seeing uh, me succeed too, uh, because I, they know how important it is yeah. For me. Great. Um, so clearly, kind of look through some of the other questions. Um, I don't even know what time it is at this point. Uh, two, three. Do you guys have any questions right now? Um, what do you think would be your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge? Remembering everyone's name. No. <laughs> Uh, my biggest challenge uh, would be to make sure that I had all the appropriate paperwork uh, and, and made sure I had all the right check marks for the things like the town warrants and to make sure that the budgets are correctly put together. Um, just the procedural uh, things that I want to make sure that I'm doing really well and because, I mean, you're off on one of those, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty big problem. Mm -hmm. So though, that's my biggest concern is to make sure that I have all my paperwork in order to support whatever the board would uh, be needing or whatever the town would be needing of me. But yes, that's, that's where, I, where, where my head's been spinning at. <laughs> and um, how do you motivate your staff now? How do you keep them happy? Um, I model it. Um, I come into work happy every day. I come into work letting everyone know that they're valued and that they're doing something that, that not only brings value to me, but brings value to the company. No one that's ever worked for me thinks that I don't get it, that I don't understand what they do all day, or that you know sometimes when they're doing endless repetitive tasks, how boring it, it can be. Um, I think you come into it with a mindset and you know your people. You 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 get to know them. You get to know you get to know their their habits. You get to know when you can see them sliding off the scale, and that they just they don't they don't want to they don't want to play that day or whatever. And you allow for a certain amount of flexibility for people. And when they find out that you genuinely care, that they have the tools to do their job, and that they have um, job satisfaction, and that they know that they're a valued member of the team. I think they perform better, and I think they come to the work with a sense of purpose. Maybe a little Pollyanna, but <laughs> I, I do find that it works for me, and it's worked for the people that I've worked with. Mm -hmm. But you talked about like your leadership style and where you you coach and you give them the tools, and then you monitor. But what if you're just met with resistance? Then then what? Uh, well, um, progressive discipline, I guess, would be the, the way that you would have to go. Um, before I would go to that, I would try very hard to find out what the resistance was really about. Have you faced that? Or? Um, I have, but not in a long time. Um, and, and some of it was, you know, they, they personally didn't like their job. They didn't want to be there every day. You can't, you can't motivate that type of person. You can, you can get them to do their job, but they're not going to be happy about it if they're not happy. You know what they say, they have that, the, the circles that intersect. We have the people that are motivated. They're always going to be motivated. Just don't demotivate them. 
And then you have the people that will never be motivated, no matter what you do, allow them to just you know, go through and do their job. And then you have that sliver in the middle of people that you can really influence. Um, I, I try not to kill myself over the people that I'm not going to influence as long as they're performing mm -hmm. at, at a level that's not bringing down the group or, or they're not causing problems. But you know, there are different types of people. And you know, sometimes the solution is, is there not something else that you'd like to be doing? You know, is there something that, that you, coming here every day and doing your job makes no sense to you and you want to do something else? And sometimes they need someone to talk to them about it because they haven't realized it themselves. They haven't kind of put the effort to thinking, well, why do I, you know, come in and hate it so much or whatever. But it, it is a conversation and it's a tough conversation. And then it, if all else fails and if it's a performance issue, um, I document everything. You know, especially being from uh, starting off in a union culture, um, you have to document everything, um, and you know, progressive discipline, and and that usually ends up in some type of termination at at that point. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I know we're part of the green communities. We have a decent amount of money that comes through there. Um, grant writing, you know, being a kind of a key skill that I think we've been trying to hone in on. So I know, you know, maybe you don't have experience necessarily in grant writing, but about other kind of maybe similar experience? So um, grant writing is actually a class um, that I took in 2000, a long time ago. Um, and they are offering it again at Bridgewater State. Um, and I would want to take another grant writing class because in the last 15, 20 years, I'm sure it's changed. Um, it, it, it's not something I struggle with. I'm, I'm a, I would say, a natural writer with a, a, a flair for um, spectacular grammatic errors that I have to go back and, uh, and edit out. But um, writing is not something I struggle with um, at all. But being able to write in a way that's effective for the grant, I think I would like to go back and take one more, it's a one credit class, so it's two, it, it meets two times, um, and take another class just to make sure that I have all the, all the T's crossed and the I's dotted to be what the, the, the town needs for, for grant writing. Because I do know, I, I, knew, I know it makes a difference in lots of towns. Um, I've seen a, a couple towns where uh, one person has taken care of, um, I don't know, $800,000 worth the grants in, in the town. And when they lost that person, the grant stopped coming. So it, it is obviously in this type of narrow margin environment a skill that needs to be perfected. And I have it probably about 80%. I'd like to be at 100 with it. Right. And, and I think even, even to that point is as long as you know, it's not a, a weakness, but as long as you know who to outreach to, sure. that is, I believe, the way to better grants is to know which ones are available yep. but then to outreach to grant writing professional people yep. that know how to spin the story in the favor yep. of the town that we can get the grant so I, I would love you to be an excellent grant writer but I'd be even happier if you knew who to outreach to. I just to, so to happen to know I know to, in I know in Middleborough that. it's Bob Silva and I know Bob has, uh, has done great work, uh, grant writing, and Patricia Cassidy over in Middleborough also has done great grant writing, and she's got a, a and, good and skill with it, and I'm very... Serpa does it too for yeah. us, but to outreach to people that their expertise is in that field, because we, we do get energy grants, but we're not getting a lot of other grants, and certainly you read it in the newspapers, which town's got these significant yeah. grants, and you say, Jesus, what the hell did I do wrong? Because yep. we sent in the paperwork. But I like people that say, Jesus, well, I need some real professional help. Let me get that. Yeah, and also being able to um, set yourself up with alerts when grants become available um, and to be able to have that information come to you instead of just search, searching it out at the time where you, you're thinking of it and being able to know where to go and access that information. Yeah. Have any other questions before I ask Maureen to ask us? No, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm set as far as our questions go. Yeah. So do you have any questions for us? Sure. 
<laughs> You're supposed to say no. <laughs> um, what is it that you guys are looking for, and you can all feel free to answer the question, in your next town administrator? I read everything um, that was on um, Mr. Lynch's site, and, and I, I read the whole write-up, and it seems really thorough. Um, but it was before you were on the board also. Um, I want to know what you're looking for in the next town administrator. Like, what qualities do you, do you put the most weight behind? I think that the candidates that we interview are all competent in their expertise of getting the job done. But it's really to have continued self-motivation and to motivate other people to want to do the best that they can do. And uh, we don't have a massive, we're, we're fortunate we don't have a massive list of town problems that we say, oh Maureen, here's these ten things you need to really shape up on. There's always things that we can do better. And I really want to do that all the time. I think we all learn uh, a better way to do things as we go along. So I'm looking for someone that's motivated themselves and that motivation really is contagious to me and that makes other people want to be the best that they can be. So mine is the skill set that you and the other candidates bring. You all have great skill sets, a little bit different from each other, but it's really whether I believe you're self-motivated and whether you can motivate other people to do the best they can be. Great. And that's really what I, I look at. Thank you. Myself. I'm only one third. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want me to jump in. Yeah. Um, go. Yeah, so we kind of started out this meeting with that question of, you know, what are we really kind of looking to get? And I think a lot of what we say, and just as John says, is, you know, we're in a pretty good place right now in Lakeville in mm -hmm. terms of we don't have major budget problems. We have a lot of new things kind of happening, and we're trying to really kind of keep the town going the way it is. But what I see, you know, is the biggest concern to me is making sure that our employees are engaged that our employees have something to come to work to believe in. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge concern of mine, is that I think the morale issue um, that I see at Town Hall is something that um, is a, a concern to me. Because I think from a board perspective, being able to you know take the difficult policy decisions and things like that, we need somebody to execute those policies, but a lot of times those policies might be met with resistance from employees who maybe don't understand the need or the purpose behind it. I think another um, key component is making sure that our boards and commissions across the town all know what's going on, that they're all being communicated with so that the town can all move forward together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my biggest concern is that the town is fragmented right now. Mm -hmm. And that that's something that I'm looking to find in the next town administrator is someone who can pull that all together. Um. It's kind of difficult to speak because I am coming into the planning here a little bit late. Um, but I agree with, you know, both what Mitzi and John said, um, that I do see, you know, some unhappy folks who work at Town Hall. So I really, you know, we need to find out why, you know, so we definitely need to uh, need to find someone who can, you know, sit down and talk to these people and say, you know, it could be exactly what your earlier point was. Sometimes folks just don't know that they want a different job. You know, they stay where it's comfortable, which is natural. Change is, you know, hard for everybody. Um, some people embrace it. Some people don't. But, um, you know, I just think going forward, we need to try to unite folks a little bit better. Um, you know, and there's, um, for me, there is a big um, learning curve component. So, um, you know, I have to figure out where I fit in to, okay. you know, with each of the candidates who I might think would be a better, you know, I have to take that selfish role if I'm going to do better for the town myself. So, you know, I, I have to do my own soul searching to, you know, I've set myself up to learn at a steady pace, but 
it's been easy to learn having great resources like Rita, you know, who always takes my calls and I've gotten up to speed even quicker than, you know. So that's, that's one part that's a little tricky for me right now. Okay. But, um, you know, but I do, I, I do have a lot of consideration for the folks that are working at Town Hall. And I mean, we have, you know, things going on there, moving offices around, moving this. So there's a lot of change going on in, you know, in their lives too. So, you know, we just need to make sure that we, you know, that we keep them in consideration, so. So it seems to me that you, the biggest thing you guys are looking for is creating culture. It's creating engagement, creating accountability, and making sure that everyone if they're not on the same page, they know where to find that page. Um, they're not searching um, for things by, you know, making the scenarios up for themselves or, or trying to fill in where the gaps are. Um, and I think that's something that I could bring um, to the position um, as it is one of the things that I preach the most um, in, in my position now. Um, and it, it, it is culture. It, if everyone knows their place and their value, and that there is um, a shared vision and that they're all part of it, I think that makes a big difference in their everyday working life. Any other questions for us? I don't think so. I don't right. think so. I, I, I know a lot about the town and I know, um, I ask Rita questions all the time too and, and, uh, and we've had some good conversations uh, prior to me even coming on, on board and trying to, uh, to be a candidate for this position, and, um, and I appreciate that, Rita. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Good. Good. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. in. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Can we take a five-minute break? Five-minute breaks are good. Thanks. Yep. On whenever we want to just say we're back on, yeah. like it's fine. Okay, cool. So you just cut out what we don't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So we're back on after a five-minute recess. So I want to just ask the board, what do you want to do at this point? Because I think that we, you know, have a couple options. One would be to, you know, not necessarily debate and or make a recommendation. Now we can talk about the candidates what we liked about all of them, what we didn't, what we want. So we kind of have two options. One is to do it now, or one is to take some time and then come back and do it later. And I kind of wanted to get people's opinions on it. I have no problem having the conversation about the candidates now. And I probably, because I'm happy to anytime make decisions with the group, to have a decision made today. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I'd like to hear from you too as to what you feel like you might want to do right now. What I what I would suggest is that I never like kick. I, I can always make the decision, but I like the idea of having the I'll call it the managers of of Lakeville, who the selectmen that as they come and go, it's really that I poll to the best extent I can the five or six managers, I don't have an exact number, but the five or six people that I would want to influence my decision, and I'm gonna ask them, give me the pros and cons of the three candidates. And not that, as you know, I wouldn't necessarily vote that way, yep. but that I'm gonna poll that. Yeah. And I have to say, if, if I asked six managers and all six managers came up with a a number one person, then I'd be fairly apt to vote for that one person. So I'm going to poll. I, my my position is that I would poll the people to say, what did you think of the candidates? Take all that in and make that part of my decision making. And that's what yeah. I'd like to do. But when I say a period of time, whether that's a one week or two week period, I, I can get those answers if not next week, because people right, might be on vacation. Yep. Uh, it, it would be, 
I'd get them in the next two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and give people an opportunity to to mull over what they what they're looking at and who the candidates might be. So uh, most people hadn't looked at the resumes. I don't know that they were public record. They are. They now. are now. Yeah. They are now. We can. I so can make you copies. I'm really going to ask the managers what they think because selectmen yeah, are, are what I call the part-time employees. They might be the decision makers of the day, but we're just part-time employees. Looking out for the best interest mm -hmm. of the town, might I add, right. but that's what I'd like to do. I, I don't want to delay it more than a couple of weeks, but it, it either can be a small agenda at one of our meetings, so if we have it on a selectman's meeting, it's not tied up with a bunch of other right. stuff. Right. Yeah. The main focus is this, and uh, we knock that out in yeah. a couple of weeks. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like to try to shorten the time period if possible, just because I think the issue I see is if we had five candidates that possibly were coming to us and right. then two disappeared right. in the right. span of right. a week, right. that, you know, I'd like to kind of get that feedback yeah. sooner rather than later, yeah. if that's possible. Yeah. And I don't know if it works for you too if we, you know, set up a tentative meeting for maybe next Friday and it was just related to this. So that we would have time, because it would be up on Lake Pan. Sure. So that you know those managers that you know we're, we're talking about the department heads to have a chance to take a look at that. That then we could kind of convene either with them or we could have you know ask for written comment if that's you know or maybe oral comment back to Clarinda you know and Rita possibly you know by that time period either written or oral you know on feedback so that we could have that conversation. Right. Would that work for a timeline well, at least? So no, set up that's fine. Minutes. I mean, I, I have the time. I, I believe the people would be available to answer yeah. my questions I, today next week. I think I'm in the same situation with John. I'd like to talk to a few, you know, folks and see what they think. I probably wouldn't go with two weeks. I'd like to see it done mm -hmm. by. You want to try the 19th? If yeah. Set up a meeting for that? Yeah. Because I'm happy with that for the timeline. And I agree too. I mean, specifically after we had you know, the conversation, you know, about what we're really looking for in a candidate. And if the biggest skill or the biggest criteria we have is the ability to work with and motivate others, yeah. I completely agree that the best course of action is to involve those managers, you know, in this decision as well, because it allows for that sort of collaborative environment to exist. <laughs> Madam Chairwoman? Yes? Uh, my turn for last Oh, right. Uh, Lake Ham would like to apologize to the selectmen and to the residents, and especially to the second candidate. We had a failure and did not record the second candidate. So um, asking other people to comment on what's on Lake Ham may not be fair. Right. Um, um, unless right. that candidate came in again and did the whole thing over, and I doubt that's a good idea. Okay. Right. Well, then I guess in terms Sorry. of maybe we can give resumes to right. those yeah. department right. heads. Right, so the resumes are the, available. And the department the, heads who are the, here. The, the people that are here are certainly going to have their own conversation. So right. I'm you sure guys. that even though we have a missing piece, it's not the end of the world. We right. can do it. Right. We can do it via the people that were here. Yeah. And, and not just talking to the people that were here, they're going to talk to other people too. Right. So. Okay. All right, I'm good with that. Do you want to set an item up for a meeting on the 19th. What time? Sure. Um, When's that, next Friday? Yeah, yeah could sure. we do morning-ish? Would that work for you guys, like 10 a.m.? Yep. Morning-ish is fine. My kids will actually be somewhere be on vacation. Time, so yeah. That works. I so should not be with you then, but I'll have someone here. Okay, perfect. Here. Perfect. And yep. Corin is exactly. going to be on vacation, but she'll... I can come, come in. in. You show sure? up. I'm sorry, but a, you're, okay. you're still on. What, what are we talking about? You're on camera. So. For Clarin to being here. Are, are you available? You're not available in. next Friday. I can come in. No, no. The, the, right. Does the next Monday work? Because people are out on vacation I, next week. Um, and I'm not saying Monday's the day either. Well, it's that's a, a selectman's meeting at night. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, we could do it at night. If that well, works? No, it doesn't have to be this way. It could be I just don't Monday and or Tuesday. I kind of like to. Coming we'll in, keep John. it to an hour. Sure. <laughs> yeah, if we do 10 yeah. to 11. Thank you, though. Do we not have to fly you back from uh, Bermuda or anything like that? <laughs> we would. <laughs> we would. <laughs> okay.
That sounds good to me. So we will gather feedback. Do we want to have Rita and Clorinda kind of talk to, I don't, I don't know how you want to. Well, I'll forward all the oh, res res resumes, resumes to um, the department heads. Okay. Try to do it today, actually. Yeah, and then maybe, and I, you know, I don't know if you guys want to facilitate conversations, you know, about it. I just, can it's we, kind of hard now that we don't have this. Can we all say, feel free to contact the selectmen if you want to discuss, not as a group, but individually? Yeah. Excellent. Bernie, thank you so sure. much. You brought us extremely high quality candidates Great. and I really appreciate you and the work that you did Go to ahead. make this happen because I think we really, no matter who we end up choosing, we have three fantastic candidates to choose from. So thank you for all your work and okay. your company's work that you did on this. Well, I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure working with all of you. So uh, just uh, let me know anything else I can do from here on out. And Great. Do we sure we to let the candidates know too that they didn't? Yeah, I guess if you wanted to let the candidates know, I'll let them all know that you're, we're going to make, make that decision. decision on the and then I miss which date? The, the 19th. So a week from today. Uh, is today Friday? Today's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 a.m. Yeah. Okay. Good. Great. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. I guess that being said, we're just going into executive session, right? Yes. All right, so I don't know. Oh, oh we do? Oh, okay. Do we have any other? Even Nate's thing is under executive. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. No, I get it. That's fine. I'll, I'll take uh, that. We get yeah. Okay. Right here. So um, I will make a motion to enter in. Do you, anyone else want anything else in this open meeting? No. Before I close it? Burn, burn. Burning? Bernie Sleeve, I was going to say something first. What, one suggestion is to, uh, regards to the, uh, the video, and I know this is somewhat, I'm not sure what the best way to handle that is. But one possibility is to not broadcast the video at this point in time. Until after. Until after you make, just use the resumes and the feedback. So that doesn't give one person yeah, an unfair have advantage. Unfair. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That might be the best. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and I, I and I think that. And, and this, they have to ask us what we think and tell and them then, to some extent. Right, because I mean, I think the only way really to yeah. differentiate then would be the department heads and leaders that we have yeah. here, you right. know, to help us with that decision. So. Yeah. And the publication of minutes. <laughs> I hope you well, got everything well, word for word. Uh, <laughs> minutes, minutes, are, minutes are okay to be published, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can do yeah. that. Well, we won't be able to publish them because we won't have a meeting to right, right, officially vote right. on them prior right. to right. They will not be published. Right. So right. Okay. So just to no, okay. that's fine. Just fail. Right. Fail. Okay. Sure. And I will make a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate regarding the police station located at 296 Bedford Street if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the board, as I do. And pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to litigation, in the matter of Trockey versus Lakeville at Al Plymouth Superior Court, CA number 1783CV00700, holding the meeting in open session would have a detrimental effect on the litigation of the litigation position, and the chair so declares, as I declare. And pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to litigation, in the matter of Surrett versus Lakeville at Al MCAD docket number 18NEM02098, and EEOC number 16C 2018-02162. Holding the meeting in open session would have a detrimental effect on the litigation position, and the chair so declares, as I declare, and not to return to open session. That was my motion. Second. Uh, and you just, oh, we can't discuss that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Colin back. Aye. 
Fabian? Aye. Powderly? Aye. All right.